Greetings, everybody. Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of Going Medieval, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 21st. If you'd like more information about this scenario, you can read it in the description below, and you can also skip the overview using the YouTube chapters. Let's get started. Looks like Mountain has won out by, like, tiny margin. Tiny, tiny margin. One vote. All right, we'll settle on a mountain. Uh, so, before I start, uh, let me talk about the changes since I last streamed this, because I haven't streamed this in a very long time. Uh, there's been three major updates since I last played, and I'm going to summarize them as fast as I can. Update number one added shelves and racks. It added, basically, food storage, so you didn't have to have your food on the ground. And it allowed you to store books on bookshelves and, thing, and weapons on weapon racks, etc., etc. Not a very big update, but a nice quality of life. Update number two adds merchants and diplomacy. So it gives you a merchant stall. It gives you the ability to caravan to other factions that are not permanently hostile to you. And it gives you the ability to set up uh, where merchants come and show up in your castle. It also allows you to relocate structures and a bunch of other QL things as well. And then most recently, update number three. Update number three introduced or revamped uh, resources in cultivation, allowing you to farm for seeds, allowing you to sow crops that weren't previously sowable, allowing you to set up uh, apple orchards and beehives and things like that. So those are the three major updates. I don't know how much of it you'll see today. Depends on how fast I am. But uh, let's get started. So what we're doing here is starting a new game on survival normal difficulty. So previously, I played on standard normal. We're going to do survival normal, which is a little bit harder, but I'm leaving it on normal difficulty still. I'm not a veteran of this game. And we're going to do a new life start, which is uh, starting with three people instead of the lone wolf or some custom. So here it is, Radamant Town, with uh, we already set up our, uh, our flag and all that. And I guess we're going to the mountain. So... Plentiful limestone. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to randomize seeds so you know that I do not know what it looks like ahead of time. There we go. Uh, all right. And next. So let me introduce you to our three starting colonists. We've got Macho Smallface. He is a constructor, carpenter, marksman, melee, and mining. A faithless builder, the lucky. Uh, we have Can a Bull. Intellectual, medicine, smithing, speechcraft, and tailoring. And Rick Rolls. Or Rick's Rolls, I should say. Uh, and he is a botany, marksman, culinary, mining, animal handling. So there you go. Our three starting colonists, they were raffled off on Discord. And let's kick this off. So again, the summary. Three settlements. Three settlers. Right on town. Uh, survival normal. New life. Mountain. Voted on by all of you. The maximum level is 50, um, not not, uh, not 20. Magenta Fairy, thank you for the resub. All 25 months of it, holy cow. Glitch for bits. Uh, Fabi for bits as well. Joint for a resub of 17 months. And then, uh, Kis oh man. Keystersad. I'm sure I got that wrong, but thank you for the resub as well. So. The setting of this game, or before I even go any further, what I should do is I pro probably tell you what this game is. Going Medieval is a colony survival building simulator where you take a group of settlers in the uh, deadly age of, like, you know, early Dark Ages or whatever, and you are setting your own settlement up from scratch. So it's 1353, and let me get rid of this music. It's 1353, and we have Can, Macho, and Rix here in the mountainside, uh, trying to vie for survival. So before I start, what I want to do is I want to analyze some of the terrain, because not all terrain is made equal. This orangey stuff is iron. Uh, there should be coal. Here's some coal. We're going to want to settle somewhere between iron and coal so that we're equidistant between them. There is very little fertile soil. There is a patch of fertile soil around here that we might want to try to farm but most of this is just limestone and uh, rocky soil, which you cannot farm on. So, a bit of a challenge. Um, 
Yeah. I'm starting to get an idea of how I want to build already. And then we have a little bit of salt here. Salt uh, is for food and preservation and all that. Uh, not too many trees, so timber is going to be a bit of a shortage. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is keeping the tutorial off, because the tutorial is a little interruptive unless you all want it. Um, so I'm going to show tutorial tips for now, but uh, you can override it at your, at your leisure. So should I keep the tutorial on? I'm going to be covering just about everything, all the game mechanics that I touch, uh, whether or not the tutorial's on. But if you want to see the official tutorials, that's fine too. So I'm thinking that in this little bowl here, I'm going to start to set up a castle using the natural terrain as a way to protect myself. And then also it spills out to this farmland. So the starting structure, as you can see, the priority at the top is just a basic shack. Uh, so my basic shack is going to look like... I think I'm actually going to put it um, not where I want to build the final structure. So I'm going to do a little 9x9 nine nine here. Before I even start building, here's the tutorial jobs. Uh, anyone that has played RimWorld should be familiar with this. So I'm going to set up the work priorities. So we've got uh, Ricks, who should be taking the bow, the longbow. And then Macho with the short bow. And then can, I'll give you the spear. I'm going to allow all of these starting items by clicking the allow tool and dragging. And then setting up a stockpile, which I'm sure is going to be the dimensions of which will change a lot. A stockpile here. I'm also going to say, don't keep animal uh, carcasses in this stockpile. There's probably other things I'm going to remove from this stockpile as well, but animal or human carcasses... Absolutely not. All right. As far as work priorities, let's get those going on. There we go. And haul. And these guys are going to start to equip themselves and then bringing the resources that I have at the start here over to where I want to build. It looks like the closest ramp. Actually, I don't know where the closest ramp is. Oh, it's way over there. That is unfortunate. So I think to speed this process up, I'm going to build uh, a staircase here. One of the things that you want to do when you're analyzing um, how attackers are going to path you is to figure out exactly what the path would look like. And in this case, it is quite the windy path here. Okay, and we're going to keep the tutorials off. Only one person wanted them on. And sorry. Overruled. <laughs> All right, let's start to mark some of these mature trees to be chopped down. I'm going to leave the growing trees alone. And you can see the yield here. So a mature tree is 50 wood, 25 sticks, and one sapling. Whereas a growing tree is far less wood. So leave it to grow a little bit further. And then dead trees are past maturity, and there's no point in keeping them upright at this point. So one of the things I'm going to want to do really early on is to get Macho here uh, to construct this staircase so I have access to the stuff over here. So I think what I'm going to do is forbid this until I have that staircase built so that nobody spends the time to go the long route over there because it's just too much uh, travel time. So Rix is going to be our tree cutter. Uh, Can is going to be a hauler, but eventually on research pretty much full time. And then Macho is our constructor. Madzy, thank you for the resub. And Kitchen Head for the resub, or the sub as well. Welcome all. Alright, so as soon as Macho... Another thing I'm going to do here is prioritize Macho to construct the stairs as soon as there is material to be delivered. Uh, when Rix, I guess, stops smashing things in appropriately. So let's go ahead and cancel the floors for now so that the material 
designated for the stairs doesn't get used up. That's going to speed me up a lot. So the first order of business is to get uh, at least a little bit of shelter around us so that we are, we can sleep, we can eat, we can remain happy and not have mood issues. So that's, that's the big goal at the moment. A, as you can see above my head, survival shack. So these stairs will help us get up here and then taking a look over here, uh, we can go down into the valley a little bit more easily but we can't go back up. So the only other stairs back up is over here and here, the ramps. So there's a lot of ramps on the, let's call it west, uh, but only one on the east. So there we go. Now that we have those stairs built, I can go to the allow tool, go to allow, and then allow the starter stuff. Because of course this starter stuff here is like our food, our medicine, um, components, things of that nature. Did you just get Rick? Rick rolled in uh, text form? No, his name is Rick's Rolls. Not Rick Roll. Technically different. Now, I'm a little worried about uh, using all the wood that I'm currently using because there is not a lot of timber on this map tile, but um, I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to put a door here in the front and then just two windows. Windows can help to, um, to allow for heat output if it gets too warm inside. Uh, I'm going to stick a wicker roof on top. No, actually, we have a lot of hay, so I'm going to make it thatch. And this structure here is... Uh, I'm, I'm planning for it to be more or less temporary. It's not going to be a permanent edifice. Uh, we are in the mountains, so obviously I'm going to be making most of everything out of limestone, if possible. Limestone's going to be tougher anyway. All right. And then up here, I will queue up some of these trees that are mature or dead to be cut down. I have to be very picky about what I cut down. The other thing I want to start to do is to plant trees myself once I have agriculture unlocked, which I'll be heading to in a minute. Um, or not a minute, quite a few minutes, because it takes a while. But um, getting agriculture so I can sow trees to be able to get wood in the future because of it, it's a very important resource uh, to have for construction. Okay, things are getting built. Uh, so talk a little bit about the game. I've already gone through the jobs priority. Uh, you can copy and paste them. You can click on the top and increase or decrease for everybody if you want. For scheduling, uh, this should look frighteningly like RimWorld. You have anything, sleep, work, or leisure. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Management is what sort of equipment they should have, what they do when they're undrafted. Um, the food and the stimulants and then research and region opens up when I have a basic research table and a cartography table which I do not have now up here you have the time controls that's pretty obvious here you have any alerts so currently it's saying I don't have enough beds which yes I am aware and the starting beds here is just going to be a hay sleeping spot Now, one question I'm going to ask all of you is, uh, what should I build first? So, there's a poll above there. I'm going to give you five minutes to vote. Or five, depending if you're Roman numerals or Arabic numerals. And, uh, you can pick whether it's a kitchen, root cellar, dining hall, workshop, storage, barracks, individual bedrooms, or church. Certain rooms have benefits. Um, of those rooms up there, the benefit rooms would be kitchen. There's a you work faster in a kitchen when it's properly a kitchen, but that's going to require a bit of uh, research to do. Same with the workshop, same with the dining hall, same with the individual bedrooms or barracks, same with the church. They're all morale bonus. Uh, speaking of morale bonus, let me show you that. So if you take a look at an individual character, they have a background, a pseudonym, age, weight, height, uh, and some perks. So cannibal here, <laughs> cannibal here is an erudite. Very good at uh, intellectual XP gains quick. Winsome, so he's good at speechcraft, bargaining, and benevolent. Uh, so again, extra speechcraft. There's about 60 traits, and not all of them are so obvious at the onset. You can also gain traits as you age up, 
So it's not necessarily a good thing to age up and gain, you know, negative traits or whatever. Uh, then there's also religious alignment. So everybody in the current colony right now are practicing Oak Brethren. Uh, there's Restitutionists or Oak Brethren. Basically just two types of religions in the game. And I'm going to make a little Oak Brethren shrine here uh, to satisfy their religious needs. Uh, and then it is a scale on all the way to the left would be devout, all the way to the right would be devout, and then neutral somewhere in the middle. Uh, then you have your inventory here. You've got the skills, and I know my head's in the way, but uh, I can I can fix that. Boop. Uh, you got your skill tree. It goes up to 50 with passions and minor passions. You've got uh, general here, which is just their stats. All their crafting, speed, etc. stats. Mood and the requirements. So food, sleep, religious activities, alcohol requirement, entertainment activities. Um, their overall mood. And then their he health. And I realize that I am going to be blocking some of this, but, uh, you know. Uh, other things. So down here is the construction. Walls, doors, roofs, stairs. Production, butchering table, campfire, research table. Furniture, uh, recreation, leisure activities like backgammon or church. So let me put a backgammon table in here. Then here is sort of the miscellaneous. So merchant stalls, banners, unmarked graves, pyres to burn corpses, fences for livestock, uh, warfare, and then zoning. And then down here are some of the commands. Chop. Cut plants, deconstruct, cancel, harvest, mine, hunt, or allow, forbid. Trix and Dubber, thank you for the resubs as well. So we almost have hauled everything in. Rix and Can are just grabbing what's left here. And then Macho is using... The wood that they're hauling in to construct. So as you can see, we have... Uh, I would say about three-fourths of this starting shack. Just a little wicker shack. One of the reasons to do it early on, just a, a wicker shack or whatever you want to build, is so that items don't decay. Now, in order to keep um, food from decaying, you're going to probably need to make a root cellar or use ice, which I currently don't have. But uh, everything decays outside, so it's important to get it into some sort of storage. So this is going to be a miscellaneous spare room, uh, which acts as part storage. It also will act as a bedroom, as a research room, etc., etc. So speaking of which, let's get a basic research table in there. And I'm actually going to put the butcher table out here, as well as a campfire in here. The campfire is going to uh, heat up a little bit, so you got to be mindful of the temperatures that it generates. Especially if you're trying to store food in the room. But this isn't eventually going to be a root cellar. And then I'm just putting some torches on the wall for illumination. Um, yeah, the Yoda stream cam is, is paused, but I'm unpausing it now. I always have it paused at the, uh, at the start. Alright, there we go. Uh, we're going to make a root cellar next. Sounds reasonable. So I have all three bedrooms that we require. Other things that you want to do is to not eat without a table. Because, you know, that's a, a dreadful war crime. So there we go. A, few, uh, a table and some stools. And then... The campfire. Let me forget that stool. A little campfire. So this campfire is going to allow us to do some basic cooking. And I can do a do until I have ten. But we didn't finish the shack before the start because of some of the hauling that we had to do. But if we take a look over here, all that's left is chronicle piles. Uh, which we'll grab and bring in quickly, I think. Campfire in a wooden house feels like a disaster waiting to happen. Yep. 
Uh, yeah, I won't disagree with that. Luckily, it's probably not going to be an issue. So, it is the second day of spring. Moderate temperatures, rain, fog are frequent. Um, small chance of hailstorms, and as you can see, there's four, of course, different seasons, 12 days each. So, some of the negative moods that we have going on right now, and you'll have to take, well, I guess you can see it over my head. They're slept outside because they didn't finish the walls, deprived of religious activities, lacking entertainment, um, very thirsty, slept in a comfortable bed. So, these are things that I'm going to be aiming to, of course, solve so that we don't have negative moods. And one of the advantages of being in a positive mood is if it's really in a negative mood, they might leave. And if it's a really positive mood, they will uh, do their work faster and things like that. Let's try to finish off all the construction projects and then continue to mark down all the mature trees And I'm also going to start marking down the ripe um, herbs and red currant as well. So one of the things to consider when you're marking down trees to be cut down is how far are they pathing wise? So that's something I'm keeping an eye on. Rather than just dragging, because you can just drag the cut trees but it doesn't really t take into account how far it will take to run there and um, what growth phase it's in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How big is this map? This is the large map. Okay, I have unlocked the research panel. Um, so the research panel, unlike RimWorld, uh, this game's a little bit different, where... To build up research, you're actually, you generate random chronicles, and then you spend the chronicles for research. And your chronicles can be stolen by raiders. So you actually have to protect your research. It's not some sort of um, intangible. It's actually physically tangible. So here, you can see that I have a chronicle pile of 25 books, and I can spend these books for architecture, which unlocks support beams. And then spend it on agriculture, which unlocks my ability to start farming. And then all 25 of my chronicles have been allocated towards these two research. And what I'm going to do is give you the chance to vote on what's next. So tailoring allows us to start making clothing out of flax and leathers. Furniture unlocks beds and bookshelves, weapon racks better chairs. Clay brick making allows for kiln, which will make clay bricks. Stone block cutting allows you to turn um, stone that you mine up into blocks for construction. Defensive structures gives you wooden traps and a reinforced doors. Smelting allows you to smelt ores into ingots. Cartography unlocks the region map. And then wooden weaponry here is for uh, basic bows and, uh, and other uh, woodworking tools and the like. So, there you go. Next research priority. And it's going to be probably a good minute before I get any of that done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set can here. As long as there's not a smithing, tailoring, or tending task, he researches. So he is going to be researching and making chronicles for us to spend. So these trees over here aren't too far from the rest of the base, so I'm going to cut them down. And we also got agriculture, so I'm going to start farming as well. We You, you start off with some uh, cabbage seeds, with uh, 35 cabbage seeds, so let's get those going. So <clears throat> it's a little counterintuitive initially, but um, in order to plant different types of crops, you actually go to cabbage field and then you can select the type of crop that you want thereafter. Some crops require particularly high skills, like herbs for medicine uh, or, or brewing, uh, but some don't. So cabbage is one of those easy crops, and uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be placing these down the best I can in one contiguous patch. So there we go. 
That's my cabbage field, my cabbage patch. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do is to make sure that, uh, that I am sowing trees. So I'm going to make a nine patch of birch, nine patch of field maple, and nine patch of oak. So if I have saplings, I'll plant them there for later because it's very easy to run out of wood. It's a large map tile, but even still, pretty easy on the mountain to run out of wood. So here is Rix, uh, one of our, well, our farmer, uh, going to get the cabbage going. And Macho is finishing up the structure. So as soon as this is done, uh, built, being built, as you can see, it says spare room. Spare room doesn't have any uh, morale benefits or anything like that, but it is... It's a way to acknowledge that it is physically enclosed. And I'm just... Right now, I'm just cosmetically uh, giving my roof a bit of um, design work. So there we go. Our initial tiny cabin. Boring, but like, that's what we needed. So, you guys voted that the next thing that I build is a root cellar. Uh, so, what I'm going to be doing is mining into the ground here uh, for exactly that. So, what I think I want to do is to mine out what will eventually be a great hall. I think what I'll do is I'll put the great hall on one level above this, and then this level here will be a level of a kitchen. I don't want the food stored too far from the kitchen and the kitchen too far from the root cellar. So underneath all of this, I'll be putting the root cellar. Eh, uh, hip is nice. <laughs> Thanks for the resub. And cheers. Oh, uh, puppy treats. Sorry about that. Let me get that out to uh, Mr. Yoda. There you go. Got about... Uh, little over a minute to vote on next research if you haven't already so nice things to have would be this oak brethren shrine that's going to help to fulfill the deprived of religious activities uh the slept outside will already be uh resolved tonight because this is an enclosed space now and then the uncomfortable bed requires furniture the very thirsty is something that Ricks will solve as soon as he eats. And then another thing I probably ought to do is look to hunt. Now, there's not a lot of creatures on the mountain tiles. Uh, so things, it's a little scarce. I'm probably going to hold off on hunting until I absolutely am running out of food. But I do suspect I'll be running out of food pretty soon. So let's get this deer here. And then taking a look, uh, it is going to be probably Rix or Macho that goes for it. But here is Rix and Macho praying to the Oak Brethren Shrine. Okay, looks like uh, stone block cutting will be the, uh, the first research up. So as soon as I have 20 Chronicles, I'll unlock that. So the current priority is build a root cellar and research stone block cutting. Thank you for voting, everybody. I think they're both hunting. I feel bad for that deer. There's also a hare over here. There's a few, actually. So this is one of the ways to level up your marksman skill, which is a very necessary skill to have when you're trying to defend yourself. Where did they go? Oh, here's Macho coming. So I guess Rick's turned around and started gardening. How come the other dogs don't stay in my room with you? Or with me? Because they don't want to. I could call them, but uh, they don't hang out here. It's a small room. There's nowhere for them to, like, relax and lounge.
Get him, Macho. Get him, Rix. Two hunters, one deer. Alright, there we go. And Rix is going to then haul that deer over to my default stockpile over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to butcher forever. So as soon as there's something to be butchered, I'll butcher it. The butchering table has a bit of a, um, a debuff because it is outside, but um, eventually I'll have a kitchen for it. Hey, Drew. Thanks for the resub and congrats on hitting the full year. How deep will the root cellar be? Uh, probably what I'm going to do is have it be like two levels deeper. So right now I'm at level... Let's see. This structure is at level seven. So level six and level five. I'll probably put the food on level five, but then I'll cool it down by digging even deeper. But it doesn't really need to be extraordinarily deep in order to be effective. They reworked it as well. So here's Rick's starting to, uh, to sow some trees. Which is weird, because the cabbage patch is not done yet, but that's okay. And then Macho is working on uh, cutting for the kitchen. But obviously, that's going to be... Let me just prioritize this a little bit better. So how big is this? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... Maybe I'll go 11. So this is the middle point. So I'm going to start to do the dig down there. It is going to be a little weird that there's like iron around, so I'm going to eventually want to replace the f iron that's in the walls with stone or something. And here, as you can see, Macho and Ken are actually in a pretty good mood. Which is good. Their joyful mood um, could be helpful. Coming in. Rix is not, and Rix. Yeah, it's just I don't think he's had any like happiness lately. But he'll come around. There's the deer carcass. Now it's still pretty early spring. So, the deer carcass, for instance, is only decaying after, like, a full year because it's pretty chilly in there. And to to slow down the decay of organics, you need... It, the area needs to be tiled up. If it's not tiled up, um, the natural ground will cause it to decay. And then it also needs to be... It also needs to be cold. Doesn't need to be necessarily below freezing, but just... Cold enough so that it won't uh, won't rot. Have you tried the new update from Space Haven? I have, but uh, here is a link about how my series are chosen. They're actually voted on and proposed, so um, a lot of the games that I play are predetermined and and not exactly actually left up to me, left up to you. I. I wasn't planning on playing this. This was actually just voted on. That's how the, the channel works. Is It's very much viewer driven. Hey, Poetic Artist. Finally over here. Congrats on that. Oh, wow. He is really putting the oak trees down. So that's another thing that I might want to consider is to say don't sow. So I get the cabbage in first because I don't necessarily want to sow the trees over sowing the cabbage. Cabbage is a little bit more important. So it looks like Macho's nearly going for the stairs here. And as far as my research goes, I have 12, 13 unallocated chronicles. So we're, uh, we're still waiting on a little bit of a uh, resource gain there. Hey, Dead Dodo. I actually, uh, at the start of the stream, went over all the things 
that uh, the updates contained. But you missed it. But yeah, some pretty good QL stuff. So it's telling me that research is available, but I can only uh, currently unlock furniture or brewing because I only have 15 chronicles. I'm going to need five more chronicles to get the stone block cutting. So I'm not going to be spending it just yet. Alright, going to jobs. Who's supposed to be cooking? I'm gonna kick Ricks up to one cook. Because he probably should be butchering that deer and turning it into food. Oh, I got uh, really quiet? That's weird, I didn't touch anything. Um, how about now? That was very odd. I think some of my um, audio equipment, uh, there's one specific thing that needs replacing. It's not, not happy about that. Still quieter than usual? Give me one second. All right, maybe that's, uh, that should be a little bit better. Maybe even too loud. Alright, can level up intellectual. And one more chronicle and I'll be able to get the first research that you had tasked me with, the stone block cutting. So, what is the next research priority? Pulls up above. Because we're nearly done with stone block cutting. And Macho here is mingling the resources. Oh, here we go. Stone block cutting. Done. So this unlocks the stonemason bench. And I'm going to place that there. And Macho should be uh, constructing that any second now. And that will allow us to turn the limestone into blocks as uh, to, to be used in construction. And then Rick here is cutting down trees so that we can continue to make benches like that. The stone block and whatever other benches that we need. So I'm periodically just checking these trees to make sure that as soon as they're mature, I chop them down. So for instance, this field maple will be fully matured in about two days, and then I'll, I'll cut it down. All right, there it is. The stone, mason, oh, 91% and then you went to sleep. I'm going to wake you up, macho. Yeah, that's right. All right, so now I can do, let's just do forever. And that will queue up the stone, limestone bricks to be made. So if you take a look at the, um, the things that I can build right now, there is like limestone walls which is made of just sort of raw limestone but not actual bricks and then soon i'll have limestone brick uh which is a a way to stretch that material a little bit further and i think for this stairwell i'm gonna want to make a uh like a limestone brick stairwell instead of a um instead of just wood All right, furniture is next. So furniture will unlock 
racks, chairs, and bedding. Bedding is probably the more important of it. And then it also furniture unlocks uh, furniture two, which is candelabra, larger tables, chests, and sconces and the like, decorative structures, which allows you to specialize certain rooms as like workshops or butcheries or whatever. And then decorative banners for uh, great halls, which is for dining rooms. So, uh, yeah, got it. So we are four days in or three days from start. There is no goal like uh, space travel or anything like that. This is medieval. The The goal is just to survive. All right, so Macho's moving the raw meat and carcasses from that uh, deer inside. And I just have to keep an eye on my resources to make sure that I don't run out. I'm also going to start to allow the birch and maple and oak to be sown. And there's a deer pretty close by, so I'm going to hunt that as well. I'm going to have Can prioritize a little bit of the uh, stone brick production so that I have some limestone bricks in order to work on that root cellar. So here is a third type. So you can see the regular limestone stairs have uh, 550 HP. And then the blocks have a thousand. So it was worth the wait. And I'll have Can make a few more blocks. In fact, job can, you'll briefly be set to craft instead of uh, research, so we can get more bricks out of you. Seems like Rick's got his prey. He's butchering right now. And Macho is building those stairs down. So at this point, I'm going to dig uh, three in like this. So go even further down. So Macho is going to be set to mine that there. Can is still stone block cutting. So I have 55 bricks. And I think what I'm going to do is do until I have... 200. It's going to be nice to have uh, more people join so that I can... Oh, speaking of which. Uh, more people join so that I can, you know, have more laborers. So, a Rangi Hawker empties their pack, uh, spreading a selection of oddments on linen cloth on the ground. This is the first trade opportunity from a friendly visitor. So there's a merchant here from Kuthbald Gaveston. And he is coming in and uh, we'll be able to buy stuff or sell stuff to him. Barter, in other words. Nothing like a good bartering opportunity. So, the person best at speechcraft uh, would be Can, by far. So, Can will do the speechcraft, uh, or the trade, rather. Can also has uh, Winsome, so also gets additional bargains. So, double trouble. Do I have anything to barter? I don't have much, but I have some. I have a little bit of stuff. You know, some of the starter research, starting resources and the like. I'm also going to start to allow 
the limestone up here and ingots. So can, let's have you trade. So the way this works is you do have a barding balance and if you give a lot, it's a gift. Uh, so what they have is on the left here. They have flaxseed, herbs, cider, cabbage seed, beets. So like if I wanted to buy, let's say three beet seeds, uh, right now I have to offer something up that's worth it. So let's see, I will offer up some raw meat and then boom. It is nice and balanced, and I can hit accept. I will acquire three beet seeds for four meat. And then over here, I can uh, plant the beet seeds. It requires a botany skill of 20, but I do pass that with flying colors. And I'll put a little tiny little beet seed here. And then I'm also going to tell um, my farmers to wait until the flowering phase. So there's different phases in which you can harvest. There's ripening, which gives you no seed and a little bit of crop. There's ripe, which gives you more crop, but only enough seed to kind of replace it. And then there's flowering, which gives you fewer crops and more seed. So for the beets here, because I only have three beet seeds, I'm going to say wait till flowering so that I can turn my three beets into uh, 15 after one plant cycle. That way, I'm prioritizing seeds over food. Um, this was in the latest, or one of the late, yeah, the latest update, I should say. So, just letting you know what's going on there. All right, so I have enough bricks to go back to research, and you guys said get furniture, so I need 10 more chronicles in order to unlock that. Here, Rix is going on for the trees. Okay, I have plenty of wood cut down right now, so I don't need to worry about that. And we're still mining out the root cellar. It takes a while. Stone construction is a lot... Uh, takes a lot longer than wood, and mining stone takes a lot longer than mining uh, soils. Why is it cracking above? Uh, because I had mined out the adjacent tiles. So it's also cracking here because I've mined out around here as well. It's just sort of an indicator that you've done stone cutting in the area. What I can do once I'm wealthy and have time for nice things is to replace the raw rock with, um, n you know, constructed tile, whether it's brick or whatever. There's also insulation factors. So thermal insulation of a wooden wall is 0.6, of a limestone wall is 0.7, and a limestone block wall is 0.75. So if I'm trying to make a root cellar and keeping it cold, limestone block walls are gonna insulate better than everything else. Uh, but of course, using natural tile is helpful when you're poor and don't have a lot of um, manual labor to be done, right? So I'm, um, I'm gonna be building this as cheaply as possible because of um, uh, wealth and, and workforce constraints. What would be a good time to worry about defense? Uh, really entirely depends upon your difficulty. So right now it's warning me at uh, day five to build up my defenses. There's also some things that you can do to give yourself um, some basic defensive capabilities without having to invest too much. So one of the things I could do here is, and, and I will, uh, just because it's so cheap, is to build just a wooden wall here, a door, and then... Um, like, a, like a little stair thing here, like that. This is... So very inexpensive and will protect me okay-ish. I'm making out of wood because it's fast, because I don't want to spend too much time uh, deviating from the current priorities. 
But uh, there, there you have it. Very, very rudimentary uh, b sort of setup there. All right, one other thing I should do is to uh, poke around the plants here and, and harvest everything that's ripe. The herbs and the mushrooms to try to maximize the amount of um, natural resource yield. So this is like ripe flax that will give me flaxseed. And that way I don't have to buy flaxseed, which is uh, which is good to save my money. We got a little bit of barley over here. Same deal. Uh, Zest Siddle, thank you for the reset. Macho, come on. You can't be failing the wooden walls here. They're not hard to build. I'm not investing anything in defense other than this basic wood, because I, I don't need more. I'm not going to be doing more than that at the moment. Thank you for tuning in to Going Medieval, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 21st. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com has the link to Discord, as does the description of this video. If you'd like to catch a live stream, Rodamont.com and Discord is also the resource for that as well. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.